This morning on CBS 2 News, the battle at the state house, a bill that won't move forward. Plus, which state agency will be presenting its financial goals later today? Plus, preventing suicide, a big event is taking place in Nampa tonight. Before it happens, we're talking to the organizer who shares the purpose behind it. And look at this adorable pet pig. Police rescued it. Now they need your help finding its owner. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look for you of downtown Boise. It's looking a little foggy out there on this Tuesday. It's January 17th, 2023. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter and Vasily. Yesterday, it was it started to feel a bit colder, mm -hmm. so we're now on that. Yeah, we're now on, we're now seeing those temperatures starting to decline. We're just two degrees below our high of yesterday. Today's high going to be 40 degrees. And as you just saw in that live picture, we are seeing some fog develop. That fog has just developed in the last 30 minutes or so. So we are starting to see visibility decrease here in the Treasure Valley. When you head out the door this morning, we are going to see a partly cloudy morning. Temperature is going to be 28 degrees at 9 a.m. That'll jump up to 33 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 40 degrees. That's going to be around 3 p.m. As I said, we're going to see a partly cloudy morning here in the valley, but that may clear up into some sunshine. Right now, we are sitting at about 27 degrees with that fog here in Boise, 28 degrees over in Meridian, 28 degrees. Also, the temperature right now in, in Caldwell, 30 degrees the temperature right now in Nampa, and 27 degrees down in CUNA, 37 degrees over in Ontario. They're a little bit warmer this morning, and 30 degrees over in Mountain Home. Then up in the mountains, they're sitting in the teens this morning, 15 degrees in Sun Valley, and 6 16 degrees in McCall. Now temperatures are expected to remain in the high 20s. 28 degrees expected at 7 a.m. We'll drop back to 27 degrees at 8 a.m. 40 degrees going to be the high in Boise. 42 expected in Emmett, Caldwell, and Nampa. 39 in Mountain Home and up in the mountains. 31 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Tuesday morning, as you can see, not too much going on. Some cars out there, but everything moving along smoothly. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. Just keep in mind it is foggy in some areas, as Vasily mentioned. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Well, CBS 2's investigation into Idaho's foster care crisis reveals some children are still living in short-term rentals. These are children who have already experienced trauma. We do still have some children in our short-term rentals. Um, they, uh, most of the children don't stay very long, but we certainly have noticed that the population of children that end up in those um, homes are very high needs children. That's Child Welfare Bureau Chief Andy Blackwood. Now, in addition to having more needs, Andy says these children are often tougher to place. They're children who um, have we're, we have an opportunity to assess them in that forum, and then sometimes they do need to, to spend a little time in a more focused treatment program in a facility. Andy says Idaho lacks enough foster parents and programs that help children in foster care. Coming up in the next half hour, we continue our look at Idaho's foster care crisis. This time, we'll take a look at data that shows the number of children adopted from foster care who enter the system again. We'll explain how this impacts the child, if you're interested in becoming a foster parent, we have a link to apply in all of our stories about Idaho's foster care crisis on our website at IdahoNews.com. Well, today at the State House, the Department of Health and Welfare will be presenting. This includes child welfare. Now, CBS2 will have a reporter at today's Joint Finance Appropriations meeting. We'll share our coverage on CBS2 News at 4 o'clock. And an Idaho state senator, in the meantime, trying to remove rape and incest from the state's abortion ban exception. His attempt did fail. Now, one of the senators, Scott Herndon's two abortion bills will be printed. That one attempts to fix confusion over ectopic pregnancies. The other, which would have removed the exceptions for rape and incest in our current abortion law, is dead for the session. It was returned and will not be printed. When questioned by Democratic Senator Melissa Wintrow, he said Idaho wouldn't be forcing anyone to carry a child to term. Some people could describe the situation that you're talking about as the opportunity to have a child in those terrible circumstances if the rape actually occurred. Senator Ben Toes of Coeur d'Alene was the only one who did vote for it. 
Another abortion bill sponsored by Herndon did move forward. It attempts to clear up language in current Idaho law, changing the definition of abortion, which he said would more closely align with the definition from the 1800s. We are shifting the focus from the termination of a clinically diagnosable pregnancy to the intentional killing of a living human embryo or fetus. It would also define embryo or fetus to mean any human in utero. He says the changes offer clarity for doctors in handling things like ectopic pregnancies. That's when a fertilized egg implants outside the uterus and is not viable. The two Democratic senators on the committee voted against introducing the bill. The abortion bill that Senator Herndon successfully introduced could get a public hearing in the coming weeks. Well, there are a lot of questions about the Boise City Council. Some of those follow Councilwoman Lisa Sanchez leaving after moving from her district, along with former Council President Elaine Clegg leaving to work for Valley Regional Transit. Later today, CBS2 is sitting down with current Council President Holly Woodings. We'll ask her what's next for the Council and how members plan to continue their work for the people of Boise. You can watch that interview today on CBS2 News at 4. Well, now to a discussion on how to combat hate and how to tell if something is a hate crime and also how to report it. United Against Hate, it's an initiative launched by the Department of Justice for the local level. And from a societal perspective, the beginning of the path to violence occurs when people are unwilling to listen to each other. And when they start viewing their fellow citizens as others and when they turn violent rhetoric into actual violence. Now, speakers at last night's event shared that 62% of hate crimes, they relate to either race or ethnicity, and 16% relate to sexual orientation. Canyon County's hate crime prosecutor, Ruth Coos, says Idaho hate crime statutes, they don't cover gender or sexual orientation, making them hard to prosecute. The state code does not allow for prosecution under malicious harassment, for example, based on sex, sexual orientation, gender, things of that nature. So we are, we're more limited. She says crimes that could be labeled as hate crimes are usually prosecuted under another term like aggravated battery. Well, Connection is the Cure. It's happening tonight. It's a concert at the Fort Idaho Center, spreading awareness about mental illness and suicide. September Frogley created Connection is the Cure when she lost her brother to suicide. Frogley felt that she needed to make a change to help end the stigma surrounding mental illness. I felt like if we could speak up and start talking about our experience and um, start to break down some of those walls of that stigma and that shame, that um, maybe we can make a difference in helping people so their stories could turn out differently. In addition to musical guest Ben Fuller, there will also be guest speakers and community resources. Doors open at 5 and it is free. And when is the last time you checked your home for radon? It's a colorless, odorless, and invisible gas that can build up in your home over time and it's the second highest cause of lung cancer in Idaho. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare is holding several virtual workshops this month to learn more about radon, what your test results mean, and the next steps. The next one is happening today. For more information on how to register, you can go to IdahoNews.com. Well, hey, Boise State, their men's basketball team has a rematch against the Wolfpack of Nevada. This time, it's here at home. Now, just three weeks ago, the Broncos lost to the Wolfpack by a bucket. Tonight, a shot at first place in the Mountain West. Now, Nevada is currently on top, but the Broncos, they plan to change that. Now, if you can't be there in person, you can watch the game live tonight. That's on the Treasure Valley CW. That's Channel 2.2. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock sharp. Well, you don't hear this every day. Caldwell Police rescuing a pig. Take a look at this cute animal. People reported the animal to police yesterday. Those same people contained it until the officers arrived and they took it to West Valley Humane Society. So if this is your pig, reach out to the Humane Society to claim it.
Oh, what a cute little guy. Cute. <laughs> Just another Monday, a runaway pig. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it is Tuesday. Loving the sunshine, mm -hmm. Vasily, and yeah. hoping that'll stick around a little bit longer. Yeah, we're going to see a partly cloudy morning with this fog, but we're going to break out into some sunshine this afternoon. We should see some clear skies and sunshine. So looking good this afternoon. Right now, we aren't seeing too many high clouds over the valley, but we do have some low clouds. Here's a look at Bogus Basin right now. And those low clouds covering the valley right now, we are going to to see that fog for the next couple of hours here in the valley. We just saw it form in the last 30 minutes or an hour. Now we over the next few days, we are going to see that slow cooling trend and that's going to drop temperatures below average by Friday. We'll stay in the mid 30s throughout the weekend. We do have a snow chance on Thursday morning and we'll also see some light snow this weekend as well. Here's a look at the chances of precipitation. We are going to see a small ridge of high pressure here. That's going to keep us dry on Tuesday and for most of Wednesday, but into Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, we are going to see that snow settle in and we'll see some snowfall throughout the day. Now we'll see mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon on Thursday and then we'll remain dry till Saturday. We may see some scattered snow showers on Saturday and then we'll remain dry on Sunday and Monday. Here's a look at the today's forecast. Temperatures will jump up to 34 degrees at 11 a.m. and then we'll break out into sunshine when we see our high of 40 degrees. Here's a look at the forecast highs over the next five days. We'll stay at 40 degrees into tomorrow and then temperatures will drop to our average of 39 degrees on Thursday, then temperatures will dip into the mid 30s. We'll see temperatures drop to 34 degrees on Friday, and then we'll drop to or jump to 35 degrees on Saturday. We'll stay below average through the weekend. And that'll lead into early next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Some chilly temperatures mm -hmm. heading our way compared to what we've been having. Yeah, and we'll see chillier overnight lows too. Temperatures will drop into the low 20s here in the mm -hmm. valley, so going to get cold. Definitely want to bring out those jackets. Yep, definitely something to keep in mind. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, as you can see, gradually starting to see some more folks out there, but traffic moving along smoothly. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. Just keep in mind that fog that is in some areas right now. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, some parts of California getting a year's worth of rain in a matter of weeks. Roland Stedham shows us the impact the next weather maker will have on people already on the brink of losing their homes. Plus, a driver comes very close to getting caught in a tornado. We have that next. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. First, taking a look at yesterday's question. It was hard. The question was, how many slices of pizza does America eat per second? I think that's Americans. Just putting that out there. All right, the answer, surprisingly lower than we thought, actually, about 350 to 400 slices per second. Getting y'all hungry this morning. Now for today's question, how many people have walked on the moon? All right, guys, no Googling. You can guess on our Facebook page or Twitter. CBS2 Adventure Weather is showing you local forecasts across the Gem State. Over in Caldwell, 42 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. Temperatures will drop to 26 degrees overnight, and then tomorrow they'll drop to 40 degrees with partly cloudy skies over in Caldwell. Meanwhile, in Council, 39 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. Temperatures will drop to 19 degrees overnight, and then tomorrow partly cloudy skies with a high of 33 degrees in Council. Thank you, Vasily. While well, a mother and her two children froze to death, police in Pontiac, Michigan, say the 35-year-old woman was having a mental health crisis. She believed someone was trying to kill her and she was trying to escape. Authorities found the woman and her sons, 9 and 13 years old, in the woods. Investigators also found a 10-year-old girl at the scene. She survived and is recovering in a hospital. Well, parts of Northern California continuing to get soaked this morning. Mudslides and flooding, just some of the concerns. Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham brings us the latest on the deadly storms. In California, another big storm after a series of atmospheric rivers hit the state. One storm after another overflowing rivers, flooding farms, roads, and neighborhoods, and causing landslides. More than 400 in the last two and a half weeks. Some of them catastrophic. We have seen damage from down in Santa Barbara and Montecito all the way up uh, north um, on the coast, in the valley, in the mountains. Um, it has really hit us hard from one part of the state to the next. 
After three years of extreme drought in California, the state received about a year's worth of rain in a matter of weeks. By some estimates, 22 to 25 trillion gallons of water have fallen over the course of the last 16, 17 days. At least 19 people have died as a result of the storms. Hundreds more were rescued across the state. From a man who drove over a cliff, his SUV dangling over the crashing waves, to a woman airlifted from a creek after clinging to a tree amid rapidly rising waters in Southern California. Two families evacuated from a mobile home park that flooded in the northern part of the state. A coastal road has also given way west of San Jose, collapsed as the ground went out from under them. It can get nasty. It really can. North of San Francisco, a resident says his apartment complex was overrun by debris as a hillside collapsed, with trees crashing through the bathroom windows. It's coming down this broad and about this deep, all mud flow. I've just been crossing fingers every night when I go to bed that I wake up and we don't have a tree down. It's really devastating. It makes, I, it's, it just breaks my heart. And just the flooding, and it's almost unbelievable. The Sierra Nevada mountains already hit by feet of snow are expecting an additional one to two feet, adding relief to the state's water supply and lingering drought. But the snow and high winds were making travel treacherous. Sliding all over the road, it, you know, you got to know what you're doing in the snow or at least have a plan. For this Santa Cruz community, a unique plan, a zip line to cross their local creek after the bridge was washed out. Well, you live in the woods, you know, you just kind of got to be prepared. We're a resilient group up here. We do have... Uh... We'll take a look at this. A driver caught a tornado on camera in Williamsburg, Iowa. The storm moving across I-80, as you can see here, no significant damage was caused. Luckily, no one was hurt. Uh, hoping Oof. everyone stays safe out there with all yeah. these crazy mm -hmm. weather conditions happening mm -hmm. right now across the country. Yeah, no, yeah. too close for comfort there. Mm -hmm. But back here at home, everything feeling pretty comfortable, honestly. Yeah. It's, yeah. The sunshine's been great. Mm -hmm. uh, temperature's a little bit cooler. You can definitely feel it when you're stepping out the mm -hmm. door in the morning. But that sunshine is hanging around. Yeah, that sunshine going to stick around today. A beautiful day yesterday and a beautiful day expected today. Here's a look at the sunset yesterday at Bogus Basin from CBS2 reporter Luke Randall. He went skiing yesterday at Bogus Basin and took this shot. Just a beautiful sunset yesterday. Now here's a look at satellite. We are seeing the jet stream start to shift and we're seeing more of a northerly flow. It's going to pull some more uh, cold air from the north and bring it down here into the gem state. Now this low pressure system is set to impact the coast, but we will see it start to move or we will see some of it start to impact us here in the Treasure Valley. And then by Friday, we will see some sunshine. Now here's a look at future cast. We are going to see a partly cloudy morning here in the valley, and then we'll start to see that sunshine move into the region. We'll see a mostly sunny afternoon and we'll see that cl those clear skies carry over into the evening. Now we will see some cloudy skies move into the region on Wednesday. We will see partly in a mostly cloudy skies then and then we'll see that snowfall start to move in on Thursday morning. Now here's a look at the seven day forecast. 40 degrees expected tomorrow. Temperatures will drop to 39 degrees on Thursday. That's when we'll see that morning snowfall and then we'll see mostly cloudy skies during the day. 34 degrees expected on Friday. Then we'll jump to 35 on Saturday before dropping back down to 34 degrees on Sunday and then temperatures expected to drop to 33 degrees on Monday here in the valley. Meanwhile over in the mountains 32 degrees expected today. Temperatures Temperatures will drop to 20 degrees on 29 degrees on Wednesday and then jump to 31 on Thursday and Friday. 30 degrees in snow showers expected on Saturday and then temperatures will drop to 28 on Sunday and Monday in the mountains. Some chilly temperatures heading our way, but mm -hmm. luckily on our camera shots all looking yeah, well, conditions looking fairly good. We are seeing that light fog yes. here in Boise right now, but the lower Treasure Valley is looking fairly clear this morning. We're just again dealing with that fog here in the upper valley this morning. Good to know and good to keep in mind if you're heading that direction. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. As you can see on your screen, everything looking nice and smooth. Traffic moving freely, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. Just keep in mind in the Boise area, we are seeing that light fog that Vasily mentioned. So maybe give yourself some extra time to get to your destination safely. And of course, when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the founder of one of the biggest stores in the U.S. explaining why he couldn't build his business in today's economy. 
Plus, a new book about the royal family is breaking huge records. Just how successful Prince Harry's new book is already. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 524. Welcome back. The founder of one of America's largest companies says he couldn't have built his business in today's economic and political climate. National correspondent Kayla Gaskin spoke with Home Depot's co-founder to tell us more. The economic struggles of the past two years hitting small businesses hard. Labor shortages, supply chain issues, inflation, high borrowing costs, and tight regulations providing hurdle after hurdle. Home Depot founder Bernie Marcus has seen decades of market ups and downs, but nothing like this. How would you relate where we are right now to what you've seen in the past economically? It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. How damaging is the current environment to building business? Well, Home, Home Depot was a small business when we started it. And if we started in today's environment, I don't think we get past 15 stores. Although Marcus co-founded the Home Depot in another tough economy, the high inflation and exorbitant interest rates of the late 70s, he says today it's worse because it's not just the economy hurting small businesses, but politics too. Our leadership is not good. Regulations of taxes, of uh, human resource policies, diversity. There's small businesses out there today that could be a Home Depot tomorrow, uh, and we're, st we're strangling them. Marcus also arguing the woke education system adds to the problem. You have the group that goes to college, universities, and they are taught socialism. Whatever you want, the government's going to give it to you. Socialism does not work. It's never worked anywhere in the world. In an effort to address the issues he sees and inspire others, Marcus penned a new book, Kick Up Some Dust. Put your brain in order and put your mind into things that are going to help the world. Although he fears half of small businesses won't weather the current economic climate, Marcus remains hopeful it's not too late to right the ship. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Well, reality TV stars Todd and Julie Chrisley will begin their prison sentences today. They were sentenced in November for fraud and tax evasion. Todd Chrisley will serve 12 years and his wife Julie will serve seven. Both will be serving their time at minimum security prisons. And Prince Harry is playing second fiddle to no one when it comes to book sales. His explosive memoir, Spare, is the fastest selling nonfiction book of all time, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. On its release date, it sold more than 1.4 million copies in Britain, the U.S., and Canada. Coming up on CBS2 News, a look ahead to this year's housing market, what both sellers and buyers can expect. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Right now on CBS2 News, the serious reservations prosecutors have about a request made by Lori Mallow. Plus, improving school bus safety, the plan some lawmakers hope will save lives. And back in business, Southwest Airlines gives customers an update on the progress being made. CBS2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and happy Tuesday, everybody. When you head out the door, you'll notice temperatures in the high 20s, 28 degrees expected at 9 a.m. Temperatures will jump up to 33 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 40 degrees. That'll be around 3 p.m. We'll see a partly cloudy morning here in the valley, and we are seeing some fog right now. We are sitting at about 27 degrees with little to no wind, so that feels like temperature staying at 27 degrees. 27 degrees also the temperature right now in Cuna, and 28 degrees of temperature 
right now in Meridian and in Caldwell. Now 30 degrees is the temperature over in Nampa and a little bit warmer over in Ontario. They're sitting at about 37 degrees this morning and then up in the mountains they're sitting in the teens 15 degrees in Sun Valley and 18 degrees in McCall this morning. Now starting your day with us here at CBS 2 temperatures are going to sit in the low to, or high 20s 28 degrees expected at 7 a.m. and 27 degrees expected at 8 a.m. 40 degrees going to be the high in Boise 42 in Emmett Caldwell in Nampa 39 degrees going to be the high in Mountain Home and up in the mountains 31 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we hit 531 on this Tuesday morning, as you can see, slowly starting to see some more cars out there. But as you can see on your screen, traffic moving along smoothly. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. Just keep in mind we are seeing some light fog in the Boise area, so you may want to leave a few minutes early if you're heading through there. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, more children adopted from foster care in Idaho are re-entering the system. Now, information obtained by CBS2 shows 10 children adopted from foster care re-entered the system as of last year. That's 2022. That's the highest number in data we requested going back about four years. Now, of course, each case is different. However, Child Welfare Bureau Chief Andy Blackwood tells CBS2 it's about helping the children through the trauma when it occurs. Trauma does have an impact on the brain. That impact can be mitigated um, over time, but um, it, it might not always necessarily be erased. And we can't really predict how that will manifest when you when you adopt a child at a very young age, what that child will look like when they're 15, 16, you know, 17 years old. We also asked about the long term impact of a child being adopted from foster care and then re entering that system. Brian, it's really hard to say. Um, it's really hard to predict. Some children um, who have had the same experiences um, just due to their own internal resilience, how they respond to a treatment or a connection with a safe adult, um, it's really hard to say. The Department of Health and Welfare says it works closely with families ensuring foster and parents adopting the child know what the child has experienced in their life. Their goal is to make the child's transition as smooth as possible. You can read more on our reporting of Idaho's foster care crisis. We have that on our website. That's IdahoNews.com. We also have stories about the state sending hundreds of kids out of state for care and an explanation about the shortage of foster parents in the state of Idaho. Well, today at the State House, the Department of Health and Welfare will be presenting. This includes child welfare. CBS2 has a reporter at today's Joint Finance Appropriations meeting. Of course, we'll share our coverage on CBS2 News at 4 o'clock. And we bring you an update on the case of Chad and Lori Vallow Daybell. Court records show prosecutors have serious reservations about Lori's requ request to meet her husband for strategy sessions ahead of their trial, saying there's no inherent right or privilege for them to have direct communication. Prosecutors want the couple to be put on the death penalty if convicted, but Lori's attorney does not think she qualifies for that punishment. In response to the filings, prosecutors say she intended for her children and Chad's wife to die and that she affirmatively acted to make those deaths happen. Their motion will be heard Thursday. CBS2 will continue to keep you updated. Well, Caldwell Police are warning about road rage this morning. The department saying it's seen an increase over recent months. So if you are a victim of road rage, Caldwell Police says do not pull over. Now, if you need to make sure there are a lot of people and cameras around, if you can, go to the police department. They say when the situation feels threatening or dangerous, just call 911. Well, a job fair is happening today. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Courtyard by Marriott, just off I-84 on Eagle Road in Meridian. Over 50 companies will be looking to hire, and they'll be there with job openings ranging from manufacturing to education and communications. You can register for this job fair online, and we have a link to that on IdahoNews.com. Well, there are a lot of questions about the housing market this year. Brent Hunsager learns both home buyers and sellers are on the same page. When it comes to the housing market, are we in for another roller coaster ride in 2023? Next 12, 18, 24 months in housing is going to be is going to be difficult. 
Last year, mortgage rates doubled, sales plummeted, and many would-be buyers and sellers were sidelined. In recent months, home prices have cooled off from the blockbuster gains of spring of 2020 to the spring of 2022, when home prices rose nearly 40 percent. House prices rose very strongly during much of the pandemic, and we're just retracing some of those price gains. Economist Mark Zandi says the direction of the market this year will be determined by the inventory, the broader economy, and mortgage rates. According to Freddie Mac, the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage averaged 6.33% in the week ending January 12th. That's down from 7.08 last fall, but well above 3.45. That was the rate a year ago. The CEO of Rocket Mortgage says relatively high mortgage rates have caused homeowners to reconsider selling their homes. And that's leading to higher competition for those fewer homes on the market. But we're not seeing you know, 15 offers on one home at this point in time. We're starting to see prices come down a little bit in certain markets. So when would be a good time to buy a home this year? Experts say avoid the spring selling season, when homes tend to sell for a seasonal premium and when buyers are committed to getting it done. And if you're waiting for prices to go back down, some experts say you could be left holding your breath. I wouldn't say it's a necessarily a buyer's market yet. What I would say is it's a pretty even market between buyer and seller. Brent Hunsaker, CBS 2 News. Now, Realtor.com predicting prices may rise around 5% for the year of 2023. Well, a heads up, the Boise State men's basketball team has a rematch with the University of Nevada Wolfpack tonight at 7, and you can watch it on the Treasure Valley CW. The game will be played at Extra Mile Arena. Uh, I think everyone's just kind of playing good together right now. Um, I think we're more efficient than we were back when we played them last time. Just uh, offensively, I think we've gotten a lot better. Uh, and I think we got some really good, good loud fans uh, this year, especially. Um, and just playing in that environment, man, I think it, you could just feel the energy and it really gets you going. And I think you saw that last home game against Utah State. And I feel like if you were at that game, who wouldn't want to come back again? Like it was, it was a great environment and it was a little chippy, but it was fun. And I hope we, we get that again tomorrow night. Now, three weeks ago, the Broncos lost to the Wolfpack by just a bucket. And now it's payback and a shot at first place in the Mountain West. Nevada is currently on top, but the Broncos, they plan to change that. Again, you can watch the game live tonight on the Treasure Valley CW. That's Dib Digital Channel 2.2. Tip off at 7 p.m. sharp. All right, we're wishing them the best. Mm -hmm. Go Broncos. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and loving. Um, actually, we kind of had a little bit of a Bronco sunset last mm -hmm. night. Yeah. yeah, orange and blue in the sky. <laughs> it was awesome. We did. If yeah. you didn't catch it, folks, uh, mm -hmm. stay tuned. He'll have a picture of that as well. Mm -hmm. But sunshine in store for today. Yeah, we'll see some sunshine in the afternoon today. We're going to start off with some clouds and some fog this morning, as you saw in those live pictures just a bit ago. Right now, we aren't seeing too many high clouds over the valley, but we are seeing some low clouds covering the valley with that fog. So visibility is quite limited. Here's a live look at Bogus Basin with those clouds in the background. Now we are going to see those partly cloudy skies throughout the next couple of hours here in the Treasure Valley. We'll see a slow cooling trend over the next couple of days. Now those slow, slow cooling trend will see us dropping below average by Friday. We're going to drop into the mid 30s by Friday and we'll stay there over the weekend. Now we do have a snow chance on Thursday morning here in the Treasure Valley. We'll only see accumulation in grassy areas, but but it may make for a slick and slippery commute on Thursday morning. We also may see some light snow this weekend. Here's a look at the chance of precipitation. We are going to see a small ridge of high pressure over the next couple of days. That will keep us dry through Wednesday, but late Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, we are going to see those snow showers here in the valley. That'll last throughout Thursday, and then we'll see Friday and Saturday, or Friday mostly dry, and then we'll see some showers on Saturday. We'll see a cloudy skies through the morning, 34 degrees expected at 11 a.m., and then we'll see that sunshine in the afternoon with highs of 40 degrees 40 degrees also expected on Wednesday and then we'll drop to our average of 39 degrees by Thursday temperatures expected to dip below average on Friday and Saturday 34 degrees expected on Friday and 35 degrees expected on Saturday we'll we'll see temperatures stay below average on Sunday and Monday we're seeing temperatures in the mid to low 30s I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes and 
Boise seeing mm -hmm. some light fog this morning. Yeah, the upper Treasure Valley is seeing some light fog this morning, but as you head down to the lower Treasure Valley, not seeing too much of that fog right now. So we are seeing those foggy conditions, but otherwise not too much to get in the way. Those roads are looking dry. Good to hear. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, as you can see, starting to see some more cars out there, but traffic moving along freely. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down other than that light fog seen in the upper Treasure Valley. So keep that in mind if that is along your route this morning. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And if you think no one is watching you, think again. ACHD says it manages over 326 traffic cameras throughout Ada County. They say these live feeds help traffic engineers keep an eye on congestion and signal timings. They are also used to help ACHD and local media report traffic incidents. And of course, we have a link to those cameras on IdahoNews.com. Now it's time for our question of the day, folks. That question. How many people have walked on the moon? Oh, this is tough. Really get, testing my Oh, history. yeah. This is, yeah. yep. We are doing it, folks. All right. I'm going to, I have no idea. Maybe <laughs> 30 people? Is okay. that a lot? Vasily says 30. No, it's okay. <laughs> we, can, we can shout out some numbers. I do know it has to be at least more than five. It yeah. has taken everything in me not to Google this answer. <laughs> it's really hard, folks. All right. Doug says 15. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. We, we don't know the answer, guys. So, okay, that <laughs> yeah. sounds good. Everything we'll sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. 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 <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, 12. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's see what else. None. Actually, <laughs> says none. It was fake. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, some conspiracy to start out our morning. Now, if you think you know the answer, share your guesses on Facebook or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, pushing for change. Why members of Congress want additional safety measures on school buses. CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecast across the Gem State over in Mountain Home. 39 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop to 24 degrees overnight and then they'll jump right back up to 39 degrees tomorrow with partly cloudy skies in Mountain Home. Meanwhile, in Cascade, 31 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. Temperatures will drop to 8 degrees overnight and tomorrow 29 degrees and partly cloudy skies in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. Well, 25 million kids ride school buses each day, and it's widely considered one of the safest modes of transportation. But federal officials are renewing their call for an additional safety measure on board, seatbelts. Spotlight on America discovered that less than 10 states require them. But as Chris Daniel reports, the National Transportation Safety Board and some members of Congress are pushing to change that. Now, a warning, some viewers may find the accident video in this report unsettling. What happened that day you were on the bus? We were in a construction zone coming across a bridge uh, over a river. The driver tried to overcorrect for oncoming traffic. He felt like he was... Don Prescott was a school chaperone on that horrible day in 2001, riding on a school bus with her son Benjamin and 30 other Nebraska school children. The bus flipped and landed in the creek bed about 49 feet below Everybody just kind of ended up, you know, getting, being thrown into the ceiling, thrown into each other, and then landing in a heap. The impact killed Benjamin, who was just 14 years old. More than 20 years later, Don is still fighting for the one thing she believes could have saved his life. Do you believe if there were seatbelts in that bus, it would have made a difference? Do I believe? I know it would have made a difference. Right now, there is no universal federal requirement for safety belts on school buses. Crashes are rare, which is why school buses have long been considered one of the safest modes of transportation on the road. But accidents do happen. Just this past November, 16 people were hurt in this crash in Indiana. In Perry County, Ohio, a crash sent eight kids to the hospital in 2019. Watch as the impact sends the children flying. In 2020, this terrible accident involving a school bus in Tennessee claimed the lives of the bus driver and a seven-year-old girl and injured seven children. The NTSB wrapped up its investigation of that Tennessee crash this past fall and concluded that seatbelts could have protected the students on board. 
In its report, the agency renewed its recommendation that school districts ought to start purchasing buses equipped with three-point belts. It's an added safety feature that Jane Terry with the National Safety Council believes should have happened decades ago. We know for years, decades, that seat belts save lives, but yet, since school buses have been around, seatbelts have not been incorporated in them. We discovered at least 32 states have considered legislation about seatbelts on school buses since 2007. Only eight have passed laws. And unfortunately, too many of our safety laws are written in blood, and these are the results of crashes that happen in certain states that cause those legislatures and school boards to act but we don't need to wait for the crash to occur. Not everyone believes seatbelts are needed. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has said that the unique design of school buses already provides the best safety protection on the road through what's known as compartmentalization with closely spaced seats and energy absorbing seat backs. But Jane Terry told us it's a design that has its limits. That compartmentalization does not work when buses are hit from the side. And we've seen that in a few investigations that the NTSB has done. We found the decision for many rural and cash-strapped districts often comes down to money. But Don Prescott says the federal government should step in, and that based on her experience, after the loss of her son, no cost is too high. What do you think the price of inaction is? It's the increased risk of, of injury, liability. You know, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when. For Spotlight on America, I'm Chris Daniels. Now in 2021, members of Congress introduced the School Bus Safety Act, which would have required seatbelts to be used on buses nationwide, but that bill did not advance. Well, switching gears, yesterday mm -hmm. was a beautiful day, and we're this seeing was. those same kind of conditions. We're going to yeah. see that later on this afternoon. Oh, looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I know a little cool down on the way, mm -hmm. heading our way, but we still have today to enjoy. Yeah, we still have today. We're going to have a high of 40 degrees today, and that 40 degree high will stick around into tomorrow, but we will see some cooling into the weekend. Here's a picture of the sunset yesterday, courtesy of CBS2 reporter Luke Randall. He went skiing yesterday and took this up at Bogus Basin. Just a beautiful sight there, and here's a look at satellite. We do have a storm off the coast that is heading into the west coast. Now it's going to bring precipitation to Washington, Oregon and California, and we may get some remnants of that storm here in Boise. We are going to see some snow showers on Thursday morning, and then we're going to see some sunshine as high pressure starts to set in over the weekend. We are dealing with a small ridge of high pressure today and tomorrow that is going to keep us dry. We are going to see some clouds this morning, but that will break out into sunshine by the afternoon, and we'll see those clear skies into the evening. Evening. Now we are going to see some more clouds move into the region on Wednesday and we'll see mostly cloudy skies then and we'll see those snow showers start to move into the region on Thursday morning. We'll see mostly cloudy skies throughout the day on Thursday. 39 degrees going to be the high on Thursday. Temperatures will drop into the mid 30s over the weekend. 34 degrees expected on Friday. That'll jump up to 35 on Saturday before dropping back down to 34 degrees on Sunday. We'll see a high of 33 degrees in the valley on Monday. Meanwhile, in the mountains, 32 degrees expected today. Temperatures will drop to 20 29 degrees on Wednesday before jumping up to 31 degrees on Thursday and Friday. Temperatures will drop to 30 degrees on Saturday with snow showers expected over in the mountains. And then we'll see temperatures drop to 28 degrees on Sunday and Monday with a single digit low on Monday morning. Yeah, no, not only are our days getting colder, mm -hmm. but our nights are. Yeah, overnight lows are dropping down, especially over in the mountains. They're dropping into the low teens and even the single digits, as you just saw. And here in the Treasure Valley, we'll see those low temperatures drop into the low 20s. Something to keep in mind and prepare for mm -hmm. ahead of time. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 551 this Tuesday morning, starting to see some more cars on the roads. But as you can see on your screen, traffic moving along smoothly. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down other than that light fog in the upper Treasure Valley. So something to keep in mind if that's where you're headed this morning. Maybe leave a few minutes early to get where you're going safely. And when you hop in the car, of course, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, coming up, Southwest Airlines reveals what it's doing to make things right following the holiday travel debacle.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, here's a look at some of this morning's top stories. There could be more searches ahead for classified documents at locations connected to President Biden. CNN is reporting Biden's team has searched a private office in Washington, D.C. and his two homes in Delaware. The White House says files may have been shipped during Biden's 2017 transition out of office as vice president. They found about 20 classified documents. The sources tell CNN more searches are possible, but it's not clear who would conduct them or where they would take place. Well, six people, including a six month old dead following a gang related shooting out near Fresno. This happened last night or pardon me yesterday morning. Rather, no arrests been made, but police believe the shooter was targeting the family that they killed. In Memphis, police officers are expected to be disciplined after a man they pulled over during a traffic stop died. Family members say the officers used force and that the driver was not armed at the time of the stop. Memphis City officials say the extent of the officer's discipline is not yet known because the investigation is not yet complete. And Southwest Airlines updating customers following its operations meltdown last month. The airline sending an email to customers last night outlining its plan. Southwest says it has returned virtually all of the bags and processed almost all refunds at this point. It's also hired an aviation consulting firm to quote complete an assessment of the events and make recommendations of additional mitigation elements for us to consider. The airline has budgeted more than a billion dollars of its annual operating plan on improving and maintaining its IT systems. Southwest says it canceled more than 16,000 flights between December 21st and December 31st and lost between 725 million to 825 million in revenue. Coming up on CBS 2 News, taking a stand against hate will take you to the conversation that could improve the lives of many here in Idaho. And new information on a powerful storm headed towards California. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local weather and news continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the battle at the State House, a bill that won't move forward, plus which state agency will be presenting its financial goals later today. Plus, preventing suicide, a big event is taking place in Nampa tonight. Before it happens, we're talking to the organizer who shares the purpose behind it. And look at this adorable pet pig. Police rescued it. Now they need your help finding its owner. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live but foggy look of downtown Boise on this Tuesday. It's January 17th, 2023. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And we're on a cooling trend. Mm -hmm. Could start mm -hmm. to kind of feel it cool down a bit yesterday. As Sarah mm -hmm. mentioned yesterday, you could kind of feel that bite in the air yeah. is more heading our way. Yeah, temperatures are starting to drop into the high 20s in the mornings right now. We are sitting in the high 20s. We're going to have a high of 40 degrees today. However, we are going to see that 40 degree high stick around into tomorrow. But this weekend, we'll see those temperatures drop into the mid 30s. Now, taking a look at the out the door forecast, we are going to see temperatures in those low 20 degree range. 28 degrees expected at 9 a.m. Temperatures will jump up to 33 degrees around 11 o'clock leading to our high today of 40 degrees. That's going to be around 3 p.m. And we'll see clear up as we head into the afternoon. We will start to see clear skies then, but we are starting off our day with a cloudy morning. 26 degrees outside right now in Boise, 27 degrees down in CUNA and 29 degrees the temperature right now in Meridian, 28 over in Caldwell and 30 degrees the temperature right now over in Nampa, 38 degrees over in Ontario. They're a little bit warmer this morning and 28 degrees the temperature right now over in Mountain home. Meanwhile, up in the mountains, they're sitting in the teens this morning, 14 degrees in Stanley and 16 degrees right now in McCall. Now temperatures, as I said, are going to stay in the high 20s throughout the morning, 27 degrees expected at 7 a.m. We'll stay at 27 degrees at 8 a.m. 41 degrees going to be the high in Boise today, 42 degrees expected in Nampa and 42 also expected in Emmett, 43 degrees going to be the high in Caldwell and Ontario and up in the mountains, 32 degrees in McCall.
Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as you can see on your screen, everything looking nice and calm out there. As we hit 6.02 this morning, starting to see some more cars out there, but everything moving along smoothly, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down other than that light fog in the Boise area in the upper Treasure Valley. So keep that in mind. Other than that, not hearing of anything. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 6.70 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, CBS 2's investigation into Idaho's foster care crisis reveals some children are still living in short-term rentals. These are children who have already experienced trauma. We do still have some children in our short-term rentals. Um, they, uh, most of the children don't stay very long, but we certainly have noticed that the population of children that end up in those um, homes are very high needs children. That's Child Welfare Bureau Chief Andy Blackwood. Now, in addition to having more needs, Andy says these children are often tougher to place. They're children who um, have, we're, we have an opportunity to assess them in that forum, and then sometimes they do need to, to spend a little time in a more focused treatment program in a facility. Andy says Idaho lacks enough foster parents and programs that help children in foster care. Coming up in the next half hour, we continue our look at Idaho's foster care crisis. This time, we'll look at the data that shows the number of children adopted from foster care who enter the system again. We'll explain how this impacts the child. And if you're interested in becoming a foster parent, we have a link to apply in all of our stories about Idaho's foster care crisis on IdahoNews.com. Well, happening today at the State House, the Department of Health and Welfare will be presenting. That does include child welfare. CBS2 will have a reporter at today's Joint Finance Appropriations meeting. We'll share our coverage on CBS 2 News at 4 o'clock. Well, in other news, an Idaho state senator trying to remove rape and incest from the state's abortion ban exceptions. His attempts failed. Now, one senator, Scott Herndon's two abortion bills, one will be printed. That's one attempt to fix confusion over ectopic pregnancies. The other, which has removed the exception for rape and incest in our current abortion law, it's dead for this session. It was returned and will not be printed. When questioned by Democratic Senator Melissa Wintrow, he said Idaho shouldn't be forcing anyone to carry a child to term. Some people could describe the situation that you're talking about as the opportunity to have a child in those terrible circumstances if the rape actually occurred. Senator Bento of Coeur d'Alene was the only person who did vote for it. Another abortion bill sponsored by Herndon did move forward. It attempts to clear up language in current Idaho law, changing the definition of abortion, which he said would more closely align with the definition from the 1800s. We are shifting the focus from the termination of a clinically diagnosable pregnancy to the intentional killing of a living human embryo or fetus. It would also define embryo or fetus to mean any human in utero, he says the changes offer clarity for doctors in handling things like ectopic pregnancies. That's when a fertilized egg implants outside the uterus and is not viable. The two Democratic senators on the committee voted against introducing that bill. The abortion bill that Senator Herndon successfully introduced could get a public hearing in the coming weeks. Well, there are a lot of questions about the Boise City Council. Some of this follows Councilwoman Lisa Sanchez leaving after moving from her district along with former council president Elaine Clegg leaving to work for Valley Regional Transit. Now later today, CBS2 is sitting down with current council president Holly Woodings. We'll ask her what's next for the council and how members plan to continue their work for the people of Boise. You can watch that interview today on CBS2 News at 4. Well, now to a discussion on how to combat hate how to tell if something is a hate crime and how to report it. Now, United Against Hate is an initiative launched by the Department of Justice for the local level. And from a societal perspective, the beginning of the path to violence occurs when people are unwilling to listen to each other. And when they start viewing their fellow citizens as others, and when they turn violent rhetoric into actual violence. Speakers at Monday's event shared that 62% of hate crimes related to race or ethnicity, while 16% relate to sexual orientation. Canyon County's hate crime prosecutor, Ruth Coos, 
says Idaho hate crime statutes don't cover gender or sexual orientation, making them hard to prosecute. The state code does not allow for prosecution under malicious harassment, for example, based on sex, sexual orientation, gender, things of that nature. So we are, we're more limited. She says crimes that should be labeled as hate crimes are usually prosecuted under another term like aggravated battery. Well, a heads up, Connection is the Cure is happening tonight. It's a concert at the Ford Idaho Center spreading awareness about mental illness and suicide. September Frogley created Connection is the Cure when she lost her brother to suicide. Frogley felt that she needed to make a change to help end the stigma surrounding mental illness. I felt like if we could speak up and start talking about our experience and um, start to break down some of those walls of that stigma and that shame that um, maybe we can make a difference in helping people so their stories could turn out differently. In addition to musical guest Ben Fuller, there will also be guest speakers and community resources. Doors open at 5 and it is free. And when is the last time you checked your home for radon? It's a colorless, odorless, and invisible gas that can build up in your home over time. And it's the second highest cause of lung cancer here in Idaho. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare is holding several virtual workshops this month to learn more about radon, what your test results mean, and next steps. The next one is happening today. For more information on how to register, you can head to our website at IdahoNews.com. Well, hey, Boise State men's basketball has a rematch match against the University of Nevada Wolfpack. This time, it's here at home. Three weeks ago, the Broncos lost the Wolfpack by a bucket. Tonight, it's a shot at first place in the Mountain West. Nevada is currently on top, but the Broncos, they plan to change that. Now, if you can't be there in person, you can watch the game live tonight. That's on the Treasure Valley CW. That's digital channel 2.2. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock sharp. Well, you don't hear this every day. Caldwell Police rescuing a pig. Take a look at this cute little animal. People reported the animal to police yesterday, and those same people contained it until officers arrived. They took it to West Valley Humane Society. So if this little pig is yours, go ahead and reach out to the Humane Society to claim it. I like that we had to say that multiple people tried to contain the yes, very yes. small pig. <laughs> we got to get that little guy home. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, again, if that's your pig, guys, uh, they have it. Just yeah. so you know. Humane Society, <laughs> give them a call. <laughs> Love it. All right, folks, well, we're starting off our morning, at least in the upper Treasure Valley. Mm -hmm. A little foggy out yeah. there, a little cooler. You want to keep that scraper handy this oh, morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Temperatures in the high 20s this morning, and we are seeing that fog in the upper Treasure Valley. The lower Treasure Valley is looking fairly clear, however. Taking a look at radar right now, we are we are seeing too uh, excuse me we aren't seeing too many high clouds above the treasure valley right now but the we are seeing some low clouds over the treasure valley here's a live look at bogus basin showing off those low clouds we are seeing a little bit of fog here in the valley as well now the high of 41 degrees is about two degrees above our average that low temperature of 26 degrees sitting at just about average right now now we are going to see a slow cooling trend here in the valley temperature is expected to drop to 40 degrees tomorrow and we are going to drop drop into the low or the mid 30s by Friday. We do have a snow chance on Thursday and we also see some light snow this weekend as well. Here's a look at those chances of precipitation. We do have a high pressure system keeping us dry th through Wednesday and then we'll see those showers come in late Wednesday night and into Thursday morning. Now throughout the day on Thursday we should remain dry and then on Friday we'll remain dry as well but Saturday we may see some storms move into the region. Now here's a look at today's forecast 33 degrees expected at 11 a.m. We will start to clear up around 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 41 degrees. That'll be at 3 p.m. 41 degrees expected today. Temperatures will drop to 40 degrees on Wednesday and 39 degrees expected to be the high on Thursday. Then temperatures will dip below average and will stay below the average through the weekend. Friday's high expected to be 34 degrees and Saturday's high going to be 35 degrees. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. And a bit of a chilly morning and fog impacting some areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially here in the upper Treasure Valley, we are dealing with that fog. But over in the lower part of the Treasure Valley, as you head more west, you are going to see more clear conditions out there. So all we're seeing right now is those dry roads and a little bit of fog in the upper Treasure Valley. 
good to hear. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 612 this Tuesday morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update on how our morning is looking. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Traffic uh, off to a good start. It is uh, quiet so far. I-84 East and West of Boise. Everybody getting along all right. Uh, away from the freeways as well. Very light traffic this time of the morning. Closure of 27th. That is still in place near Boise, west part of uh, downtown. 27th closed between Fairview and Main. Still more work to be done. You'll have to use 23rd instead. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Some important things to keep in mind if those are along, along your route. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI for even more team traffic updates. And that's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News, some parts of California getting a year's worth of rain in a matter of weeks. Roland Stedham shows us the impact the next weather maker will have on people already on the brink of losing their homes. Plus a driver coming very close to a tornado, even catching it on camera. And it's time for our question of the day. First, taking a look at yesterday's question. How many slices of pizza does America eat per second? Yeah, it was a rough one, guys, but the answer, 350 to 400 slices a second. That's going to make you hungry. Making me hungry this morning. <laughs> All right, now for today's question. How many people have walked on the moon? What is it? CBS2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the Gem State over in Weezer. 40 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. Temperatures will drop to 24 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 37 degrees and mostly cloudy skies expected over in Weezer. Meanwhile, over in Idaho City, 36 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop to 11 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 35 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. Well, a mother and her two children froze to death. Police in Pontiac, Michigan say the 35-year-old woman was having a mental health crisis. She believed someone was trying to kill her and was trying to escape. Authorities found the woman and her two sons, nine and three years old, in the woods. Investigators also found a 10-year-old girl at the scene. She survived and is recovering in a hospital. Well, parts of Northern California continuing to get soaked this morning. Now mudslides and flooding, just some of those concerns. Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham brings us the latest on the deadly storms. In California, another big storm after a series of atmospheric rivers hit the state. One storm after another overflowing rivers, flooding farms, roads and neighborhoods and causing landslides. More than 400 in the last two and a half weeks. Some of them catastrophic. We have seen damage from down in Santa Barbara and Montecito all the way up uh, north um, on the coast, in the valley, in the mountains. Um, it has really hit us hard from one part of the state to the next. After three years of extreme drought in California, the state received about a year's worth of rain in a matter of weeks. By some estimates, 22 to 25 trillion gallons of water have fallen over the course of the last 16, 17 days. At least 19 people have died as a result of the storms. Hundreds more were rescued across the state. From a man who drove over a cliff, his SUV dangling over the crashing waves, to a woman airlifted from a creek after clinging to a tree amid rapidly rising waters in Southern California. Two families evacuated from a mobile home park that flooded in the northern part of the state. A coastal road has also given way west of San Jose, collapsed as the ground went out from under them. It can get nasty. It really can. North of San Francisco, a resident says his apartment complex was overrun by debris as a hillside collapsed, with trees crashing through the bathroom windows. It's coming down this broad and about this deep, all mud flow. I've just been crossing fingers every night when I go to bed that I wake up and we don't have a tree down. It's really devastating. It makes, I, it's, it just breaks my heart and just the flooding and it's almost unbelievable. The Sierra Nevada mountains already hit by feet of snow are expecting an additional one to two feet, adding relief to the state's water supply and lingering drought. But the snow and high winds were making travel treacherous. Sliding all over the road, it, you know, you got to know what you're doing in the snow or at least have a plan. For this Santa Cruz community, a unique plan, a zip line to cross their local creek after the bridge 
was washed out. Well, you live in the woods, you know, you just kind of got to be prepared. We're resilient group up here. We do have. Well, hey, take a look at this. A driver caught a tornado on camera in Williamsburg, Iowa. Yeah, it's that thing over on the right hand side of the road. That storm moved across I-80. You can see it there. No significant damage was caused and luckily no one was hurt. Oof. I'm glad no one was hurt there. Yeah. That's a big one too. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh. Yeah. All right. Well, back here at home, obviously a lot calmer weather. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of sunshine. Yeah. We're kicking off our morning with some fog. So keep yeah. that in mind, folks, mm -hmm. but a little cool down headed our way. Yeah, cool down headed our right. way. Temperature is going to drop into the mid 30s by this weekend, but we are seeing 40 degree highs and some beautiful conditions. Here's a look at sunset at Bogus Basin, courtesy of CBS2 reporter Luke Randall. Just a beautiful sunset over Bogus Basin yesterday, and we may see similar conditions tomorrow except or today except much less clouds expected today and the afternoon. We will see mostly sunny skies, but we're starting our day off with a partly cloudy day. Now we do have a storm that will impact much of the West Coast. It is going to bring rain, especially to Washington and Oregon, but we may see some of the remnants of that storm here in Boise on Thursday morning. We may see some snowfall now that will lead to high pressure into our system, into our region, and that's going to bring out some sunshine on Friday and Saturday. Now here's a look at Futurecast. We are going to see some sunshine later on today. We'll start out with a partly cloudy morning, and then we'll see that sunshine and clear skies are going to head into the evening, but then we'll see some more clouds move into the region on Wednesday. We'll expect mostly cloudy skies on Wednesday with those snow showers expected to move into the region on Thursday morning. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. 40 degrees expected tomorrow. Temperatures will drop to 39 degrees on Thursday and then we'll drop into the mid 30s over the weekend. 34 on Friday, 35 degrees on Saturday, 34 on Sunday and then we'll drop all the way down to 33 degrees on Monday here in the valley. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, 32 degrees expected today. Temperatures will drop to 29 degrees on Wednesday before jumping up to 31 on Thursday and Friday. We'll see some snow showers over in the mountains on Saturday with a high of 30 degrees and looking like a nice dry morning throughout mm -hmm. the Treasure Valley, but some parts impacted by that light fog. Yeah, especially here in the city center of downtown Boise. We yeah. are seeing some light fog right now, but as you head more west, we aren't seeing too much fog right now over in the lower part of the Treasure Valley. Good to hear. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. And not doing bad at the drive. Uh, traffic volumes remain on the light side, at least at this point. Probably see volume increase a little bit towards 7, but primarily it's 7 o'clock hour when traffic tends to build uh, good all the way around, whether it's 84, 184, or those non-freeway areas. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car, if you want even more team traffic updates, tune in to KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the founder of one of the biggest stores in the U.S. explaining why he couldn't build his business in today's economy. Plus, a new book about the royal family is breaking huge records. Just how successful Prince Harry's new book is already. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 625. Welcome back. The founder of one of America's largest companies says he could have not have built his business in today's economic and political climate. National correspondent Kayla Gaskin spoke with Home Depot's co-founder to tell us more. The economic struggles of the past two years hitting small businesses hard. Labor shortages, supply chain issues, inflation, high borrowing costs and tight regulations providing hurdle after hurdle. Home Depot founder Bernie Marcus has seen decades of market ups and downs, but nothing like this. How would you relate where we are right now to what you've seen in the past economically? It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. How damaging is the current environment to building business? Well, Home, Home Depot was a small business when we started it. And if we started in today's environment, I don't think we get past 15 stores. Although Marcus co-founded the Home Depot in another tough economy, the high inflation and exorbitant interest rates of the late 70s, he says today it's worse because it's not just the economy hurting small businesses, but politics too. Our leadership is not good. Regulations of taxes, of uh, human resource policies, diversity. There's small businesses out there today that could be a Home Depot tomorrow. 
uh, and we're, we're strangling them. Marcus also arguing the woke education system adds to the problem. You have the group that goes to college, universities, and they are taught socialism. Whatever you want, the government's going to give it to you. Socialism does not work. It's never worked anywhere in the world. In an effort to address the issues he sees and inspire others, Marcus penned a new book, Kick Up Some Dust. Put your brain in order and put your mind into things that are going to help the world. Although he fears half of small businesses won't weather the current economic climate, Marcus remains hopeful it's not too late to right the ship. In Washington, I'm Kitty. Right now on CBS 2 News, the serious reservations prosecutors have about a request made by Lori Fallow. Plus, improving school bus safety, the plan some lawmakers hope will save lives. And back in business, Southwest Airline giving customers an update on progress being made. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday morning. Now, temperatures are going to be in the low or high 20s in the morning. 28 degrees expected at 9 a.m. Temperatures will jump up to 33 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 41 degrees. That'll be at 3 p.m. Now, taking a look outside right now, we are seeing some fog here in Boise. 26 degrees the temperature right now over in Boise. 25 degrees the temperature in Cuna and 28 degrees the temperature over in Meridian and in Caldwell. 30 degrees over in Nampa this morning a little bit warmer over in eastern Oregon 38 degrees over in Ontario and 28 degrees the temperature right now in Mountain Home up in the mountains 14 degrees in Stanley and 16 degrees the temperature right now in McCall now temperatures are going to stay in the low 20s through the, throughout the morning 27 degrees expected at 7 and at 8 a.m. We'll have a high of 41 degrees in Boise, 42 degrees expected in Emmett and Nampa, and 43 degrees looking like the high in Caldwell and in Ontario, 40 degrees looking like the high over in Mountain Home and up in the mountains, 29 degrees in Sun Valley and 32 degrees in McCall. Overnight tonight will drop to 26 degrees and tomorrow's high going to be 40 degrees. We'll see partly cloudy skies here in Boise. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we approach 632 this Tuesday morning, as you can see, everything looking nice and smooth. Starting to see some more headlights out there, but traffic moving freely. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. Just some light fog in the upper Treasure Valley to keep an eye on if you're headed that direction. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, more children adopted from foster care in Idaho are now re-entering the system. Information obtained by CBS2 shows that 10 children adopted from foster care re-entered the system as of last year. That is the highest number in data we've requested going back about four years. Keep in mind, each case is different. However, Child Welfare Bureau Chief Andy Blackwood tells CBS2 it's about helping the child through the trauma when it occurs. Trauma does have an impact on the brain. That impact can be mitigated um, over time, but um, it, it might not always necessarily be erased and we can't really predict how that will manifest when you when you adopt a child at a very young age, what that child will look like when they're 15, 16, you know, 17 years old. We also asked about the long term impact of a child being adopted from foster care and then re entering the system. Brian, it's really hard to say. Um, it's really hard to predict. Some children um, who have had the same experiences, um, just due to their own internal resilience, how they respond to a treatment or a connection with a safe adult, um, it's really hard to say. The Department of Health and Welfare says it works closely with families to ensure foster and parents adopting the child know what the child has experienced in the past. Their goal is to make the child's transition as smooth as possible. You can read more of our reporting on Idaho's foster care crisis. We have that on IdahoNews.com. We also have stories about the state sending hundreds of kids out of state for care and an explanation about the shortage of foster parents in the gem state. 
Well, today at the State House, the Department of Health and Welfare will be presenting. That does include child welfare. CBS2 will have a reporter at today's Joint Finance Appropriations meeting. We'll share our coverage on CBS2 News at 4 o'clock. And we bring you an update on the case of Chad and Lori Vallow Daybell. Court records show prosecutors have serious reservations about Lori's request to meet with her husband for strategy, strategy sessions ahead of their trial, saying there is no inherent right or privilege for them to have direct communication. Prosecutors want the couple to be put to death penalty if convicted, but Lori's attorney does not think she qualifies for that punishment. In response to the filings, prosecutors say she intended for her children and Chad's wife to die and that she affirmatively acted to make those deaths happen. Their motions will be heard on Thursday, and of course, CBS2 will continue to keep you updated. Well, Caldwell police are warning about road rage. The department saying they're seeing an increase over recent months. So if you are a victim of road rage, Caldwell police say, first thing, don't pull over. If you need to make sure there are lots of people and cameras around. Now, if you can, they say go to the police department. When the situation feels threatening or dangerous, call 911. And there are a lot of questions about the housing market this year. Brett Hunsaker, learning both home buyers and sellers are on the same page. When it comes to the housing market, are we in for another roller coaster ride in 2023? Next 12, 18, 24 months in housing is going to be it's going to be difficult. Last year, mortgage rates doubled, sales plummeted, and many would-be buyers and sellers were sidelined. In recent months, home prices have cooled off from the blockbuster gains of spring of 2020 to the spring of 2022, when home prices rose nearly 40 percent. House prices rose very strongly during much of the pandemic, and we're just retracing some of those price gains. Economist Mark Zandi says the direction of the market this year will be determined by the inventory, the broader economy, and mortgage rates. According to Freddie Mac, the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage averaged 6.33% in the week ending January 12th. That's down from 7.08 last fall, but well above 3.45. That was the rate a year ago. The CEO of Rocket Mortgage says relatively high mortgage rates have caused homeowners to reconsider selling their homes. And that's leading to higher competition for those fewer homes on the market. But we're not seeing, you know, 15 offers on one home at this point in time. We're starting to see prices come down a little bit in certain markets. So when would be a good time to buy a home this year? Experts say avoid the spring selling season when homes tend to sell for a seasonal premium and when buyers are committed to getting it done. And if you're waiting for prices to go back down, some experts say you could be left holding your breath. I wouldn't say it's a necessarily a buyer's market yet. What I would say is it's a pretty even market between buyer and seller. Brent Hunsaker, CBS 2 News. Realtor.com predicting prices will rise about 5% over the year. Well, a heads up, the Boise State men's basketball team has a rematch with the University of Nevada Wolfpack. It's tonight at 7, and you can even watch it on the Treasure Valley CW. The game will be played at Extra Mile Arena. Uh, I think everyone's just kind of playing good together right now. Um, I think we're more efficient than we were back when we played them last time. Just uh, offensively, I think we've gotten a lot better. Uh, and I think we got some really good, good loud fans uh, this year, especially. Um, and just playing in that environment, man, I think it, you could just feel the energy and it really gets you going. And I think you saw that last home game against Utah State. And I feel like if you were at that game, who wouldn't want to come back again? Like it was, it was a great environment. and. It was a little chippy, but it was fun, and I hope we, we get that again tomorrow night. Now, three weeks ago, the Broncos lost to the Wolfpack by just a bucket, but now it's payback and a shot at the first place in the Mountain West. Nevada currently on top, but the Broncos plan to change that. Again, you can watch the game live tonight on the Treasure Valley CW. That's digital channel 2.2, tip off at 7 p.m. sharp. Uh, hopefully the Broncos can avenge that last second loss yeah. now here at home. Yeah, and probably nice that it's played indoors because yeah. chillier, chillier nights. Uh, yeah, this especially week. overnight, we are going to see those lows dropping into the low 20s by this weekend. And we're seeing conditions can gradually decreasing in terms of temperatures. Right now, we are seeing a little to no high clouds over the area, but some low clouds are hanging around the Treasure Valley right now. Here's a live look at Bogus Basin showing off those low clouds that we are seeing here in Boise right now. Now, a high temperature of 41 degrees is about two degrees above our average. We will drop below average by 
by Friday and take a look at this low. We are sitting just around our average. We'll continue to see those temperatures decrease throughout the week due to this slow cooling trend. And as I said, we'll see temperatures drop below average by Friday. We do have a snow chance on Thursday. That'll be in the morning and then we'll also see some light snow this weekend. Here's a look at the chance of precipitation. We are going to see a high pressure system keep us dry through Wednesday, but then late on Wednesday night and early on Thursday morning, we'll see those snow showers here in the valley. Those showers will mostly stick around through the morning and then we'll see mostly cloudy skies throughout the day on Thursday. Friday, we're expecting dry conditions, but we may see some snow on Saturday and then Sunday and Monday looking dry as well. Here's a look at today's forecast. 33 degrees expected at 11 a.m. We'll see mostly sunny skies by 1 o'clock, leading to our high today of 41 degrees. That'll be at 3 p.m. 41 going to be our high today. Temperatures drop to 40 degrees on Wednesday and 39 degrees expected it on Thursday will drop below average after Thursday and we're going to stay in the mid 30s through the weekend. 34 degrees expected on Friday and 35 degrees expected to be the high on Saturday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. And colder but mm -hmm. dry morning just seeing that light fog in some parts. Yeah, we're seeing that light fog in the upper Treasure Valley, but as you head more west, we aren't seeing that fog developing too much. As you said, just dry conditions out there, not too much to get in the way this morning. Good to hear. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. News Talk KBOI and CBS2 bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update. Yeah, things starting to uh, bunch up just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. If you're getting ready to get out the door, you know it can be a little busy on I-84 in Meridian primarily, and that is starting to kick in. I-84 eastbound, you can see in the 10-mile uh, shot, upper left-hand corner. I-84 headed east, bunching up pretty good at the 10 mile interchange into uh, between 10 mile Meridian Road and then picks up minimal crowding Meridian Road. But that can all fluctuate, nothing major going. Uh, 184 looks great and non-freeway areas for the most part still running quite light. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, hey, if you think no one is watching you, think again. ACHD says it manages over 326 traffic cameras throughout Ada County. They say these live feeds help traffic engineers keep an eye on congestion and signal, signal timings. They're also used to help ACHD and local media report traffic incidents. We have a link to those cameras on IdahoNews.com. And now it's time for our question of the day. That question is... How many people have walked on the moon? Well, I think I shot for the stars on my first answer. <laughs> I'm going to drop it down a little bit. I'm going to say 25. We'll okay. drop it five people. Folks, he guessed 30 last time. Yeah. So, okay, we're dropping five. All right, I'm guessing uh, like five. I'm going to guess five. All right, okay. what about you, Ashley? Let's go. I'm going to go in the middle of you two and go around 12. Okay. I like it. Again, we have no idea. <laughs> Again, no. folks, yes, your and guesses are as good as ours. Chess says two. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Closer to Sarah's <laughs> answer. See. Rodney says eight. All right. Okay. These are all very reasonable. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm so embarrassed right now. All right. <laughs> Diane says 24. Oh, just one under me. Yeah. Diane's right. We have no idea. All right. We'll see who wins. If you think you know the answer, again, you can share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News, pushing for change. Why members of Congress want additional safety measures on school buses. CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing you a local forecast across the Gem State over in New Plymouth. 42 degrees and mostly sunny skies today. Temperatures will drop to 26 degrees overnight and tomorrow 38 degrees and mostly cloudy skies expected over in New Plymouth. Meanwhile in Jerome, 32 degrees and mostly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop to 23 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 33 degrees and partly cloudy skies in Jerome. Well, 25 million kids ride the school bus each day and it's widely considered one of the safest modes of transportation. But federal officials are renewing their call for an additional safety measure on board, seatbelts. Spotlight on America discovered that less than 10 states require them. But as Chris Daniel reports, the National Transportation Safety Board, even some members of Congress are now pushing to change that. A warning, some viewers may find the accident video in this report unsettling. What happened that day you were on the bus? We were in a construction zone coming across a bridge uh, over a river. The 
driver tried to overcorrect for oncoming traffic. He felt like he was Don Prescott was a school chaperone on that horrible day in 2001, riding on a school bus with her son Benjamin and 30 other Nebraska school children. The bus flipped and landed in the creek bed about 49 feet below. Everybody just kind of ended up, you know, getting, being thrown into the ceiling, thrown into each other, and then landing in a heap. The impact killed Benjamin, who was just 14 years old. More than 20 years later, Don is still fighting for the one thing she believes could have saved his life. Do you believe if there were seatbelts in that bus, it would have made a difference? Do I believe? I know it would have made a difference. Right now, there is no universal federal requirement for safety belts on school buses. Crashes are rare, which is why school buses have long been considered one of the safest modes of transportation on the road. But accidents do happen. Just this past November, 16 people were hurt in this crash in Indiana. In Perry County, Ohio, a crash sent eight kids to the hospital in 2019. Watch as the impact sends the children flying. In 2020, this terrible accident involving a school bus in Tennessee claimed the lives of the bus driver and a seven-year-old girl and injured seven children. The NTSB wrapped up its investigation of that Tennessee crash this past fall and concluded that seat belts could have protected the students on board. In its report, the agency renewed its recommendation that school districts ought to start purchasing buses equipped with three-point belts. It's an added safety feature that Jane Terry with the National Safety Council believes should have happened decades ago. We know for years, decades, that seat belts save lives, but yet since school buses have been around, seat belts have not been incorporated in them. We discovered at least 32 states have considered legislation about seat belts on school buses since 2007. Only eight have passed laws. And unfortunately, too many of our safety laws are written in blood, and these are the results of crashes that happen in certain states that cause those legislatures and school boards to act. But we don't need to wait for the crash to occur. Not everyone believes seat belts are needed. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has said that the unique design of school buses already provides the best safety protection on the road through what's known as compartmentalization with closely spaced seats and energy absorbing seat backs. But Jane Terry told us it's a design that has its limits. That compartmentalization does not work when buses are hit from the side. And we've seen that in a few investigations that the NTSB has done. We found the decision for many rural and cash-strapped districts often comes down to money. But Don Prescott says the federal government should step in, and that based on her experience, after the loss of her son, no cost is too high. What do you think the price of the inaction is? It's the increased risk of, of injury, liability. You know, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when. For Spotlight on America, I'm Chris Daniels. Prince Harry playing second fiddle to no one when it comes to book sales. His explosive memoir, Spare, is the fastest selling nonfiction book of all time. That's according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Now, on its release day, it sold more than 1.4 million copies in Britain, the U.S., and Canada. All right, folks, foggy start to our morning. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to have those scrapers handy. Mm -hmm. But if you were able to stay up last night, you may have seen a gorgeous sunset out yeah. there. Here's a look at the sunset from Bogus Basin, courtesy of CBS2 reporter Luke Randall. And this is that sunset from last night, just gorgeous sights from Bogus Basin. And here's a look at satellite now. We do have a storm off the coast that will be impacting Washington, Oregon, and parts of California. And it may impact us here at home in Boise. We may see some snow here in the Treasure Valley, just the remnants of that storm. And then we'll see some high pressure settle in and we'll see partly cloudy skies with some sunshine this weekend. We are going to see some sun 
sunshine this afternoon and we'll see clear skies heading into the evening. We'll see some more clouds move into the region on Wednesday and then we'll see some snow showers on Thursday morning here in the valley. Those will last throughout the morning and then we'll see mostly cloudy skies throughout the day on Thursday. 39 degrees expected to be the high on Thursday. Temperatures will drop into the mid 30s after that. 34 degrees expected on Friday. Temperatures will jump up to 35 on Saturday before dropping back down to 34 on Sunday. 33 degrees expected on Monday. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, 32 degrees expected today. Temperatures will drop to 29 degrees on Wednesday before jumping up to 31 on Thursday and Friday. We'll expect some snow showers over in the mountains on Saturday with a high of 30 degrees. Then temperatures will drop to 28 degrees on Sunday and Monday, and we'll see that low temperature of 9 degrees on Monday morning. Some chilly overnight lows. Yeah, chilly overnight lows, not only in the mountains, but here in the Treasure Valley, too. We're going to drop into the low 20s here in the mm -hmm. Treasure Valley overnight. Yep, something to prepare for now. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update. Getting a little worse on the drive. We've got a crash on I-84 eastbound uh, about a quarter mile or so before the 10-mile exit. It's on the left shoulder, left emergency lane, but uh, drawing some attention. Getting pretty slow, almost halfway back to Garrity. Yeah, right about halfway to Garrity is where the brake lights start approaching that crash. Then after the accident, a little bit of a uh, break and then more slowing there at the 10-mile uh, merge. And uh, not bad through Meridian Road, pretty minimal. Elsewhere, a little more morning traffic starting to kick in and things will really busy up in the 7 o'clock hour. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Ryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, up next, Southwest Airlines revealing what it's doing to make things right following their travel holiday debacle. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Welcome back. Southwest Airlines updating its customers following its operation meltdown last month. The airline sent an email to customers last night outlining that plan. Now, Southwest says it's returned virtually all of its bags and processed almost all of the refunds. It also hired an aviation consulting firm to complete an assessment of the event and make recommendations of additional mitigation elements for them to consider. The airline budgeted more than a billion dollars of its annual operating plan on improving and maintaining its IT systems. Southwest canceled more than 16,000 flights back over the holidays and lost between 725 million to 825 million in revenue. All right, time for our question of the day, folks. How many people have walked on the moon? That answer, 12 people have walked nice on the moon. Guess. It was a wild you got guess. It. it was a wild guess. I like it, guys. I hope it's a lucky day for you. We'll be back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next, and watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.